All right, Ian, we have a we have a Patreon uh, out there. How do you access the CU Podcast Patreon? Patreon.com slash CU Podcast. What do you get? What do you, what do you get there? Full video podcast. Uh, a writing by me roughly once a week. A hangout once a month. Uh, and participation in our weekly topic poll. We're also on YouTube. You can become a member on YouTube. You get early access to some clips. You get the full uh, see a podcast video as well. And other goodies like emojis and emotes. And uh, there's, I'll put a link there as well. But you don't get the poll if you become a YouTube member. But you, you don't get the emojis if you're on Patreon. So it's like give or take there. Hmm, so, which one do you want? How, which one you gonna choose? All right. Our 236 see you podcast here's the poll for it. 236 Ian. in third place at 19 percent. besides super mario 35 what retro games could make good battle royale games 19 percent. second place at 21 percent. what do you miss about gaming conventions and in first place all the new ones are, are hits here 60 percent. that's that's a that's a that's a turnout at what point does nostalgia become toxic ian at what point does nostalgia become toxic to you so I've I've gotten some backlash on here before because I'm I'm I fight I I, 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 I say inflammatory things sometimes like nostalgia is poison. Um, and oh, PewDiePie is the heart of a sewer. Uh, as hard as a sewage pump. Sewage pump. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> so, uh, if, if I'm going to be less uh, acerbic, I guess. Um, Nostalgia becomes poison when it prevents you from living in the current day. Um, that that's my take on it. Um, when when you spend so much of your time yearning for a a previous era that you no longer um, are really doing anything to improve your actually your your, your actual current living situation. Um, it's cool to have. It, it's fine. You 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 can be. Uh, you you can want to reminisce about the past. You can um, want to play the games of your youth. I enjoy searching after flavors of my youth. I get very into re-releases of, of beverages. I'm a snacks. crazy person that always go to always go to friendlies when the ones around. Yes. Um, but to have that become your entire identity, um, an identity of stuff of things that no longer exist of your youth, it it, it stops. It literally stops you from growing up. Um, it, it, sto- it stops you from maturing. It stops you from aging. If that's all you have. If that's on. all you have. And okay. it locks you into uh, not not just... Um, Arrested development, so to speak? Yes, exactly. Arrested development. It locks you not... It locks not just your interests and stuff into that time frame, but it also tends to um, stop your... Seeking. <sighs> your opinions. Um, you know, your, your, your thoughts. Uh, they stop evolving you're, you're so happy to just l- kind of freeze yourself at 14 or 16 or 22 or whatever it is and you stop evolving and um i i i think it's a it's a particularly unhealthy way to be i i i i, I am like i said i'm particularly anti-nostalgia burn the past as far as i'm concerned you know live in the present but uh you can you can go back you can time travel with 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 healthily um or you can take it too far well i'm gonna i'm gonna just ask what some of the commenters are gonna say well how, how do you then have those have feelings playing devil's advocate and, and work in a retro game store like how, how do you, those feels those feelings come across with some of your customers like wow this person's living in the past or you are, are you able to tell well some customers really want to play an old game versus they are stuck in the past and aren't yeah, I mean, I've made that clear in the past. I mean, yes, some of the customers that we have are too stuck in the past. I mean, okay. they, they don't ever want to evolve. They don't want to try anything new. Um, you know, the, the it, it's the, this was the greatest generation without having any sort of real backup to it. Well, have you tried this new stuff? Well, well, no. Well, why? Because this is the best. Well, you can't say that if you've never tried you've never tried to evolve past what you think is the best so people calling themselves off to new experiences because they're basically on a drug of nostalgia yeah so to speak precisely that's what i was going to say nostalgia is a powerful opiate it always is it's yearning for the past that's that's what nostalgia is it's like you're yearning for the feelings of the past um because for some reason you think well that's maybe when life was better i felt better about things 
Um, I, I was happier when I was a child, things like that. That's a lot of it that goes into that. And for some people, that's true. Like, yeah, I was happier. I was, I was in high school having fun with my, I was having fun with my friends. Ian, we were playing NHL 94 every weekend. We were playing GoldenEye all the time in college. And uh, no, I was there with you. I was playing GoldenEye with friends. I was playing Smash Brothers. You know, I was playing multiplayer games. I was playing like that. Um, life obviously changes and it, and it evolves. And it's nice to be able for us at least small amount of time to recapture how you felt before. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Obviously look at the you know, collection is, 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 is capturing some of that, but when it bleeds into your everyday life, which Ian said to such an extent where it, where it takes over, then we have a problem when it comes to the point where it's like with anything with mental health, where if it obstructs your daily living, uh, in some weird way, and it affects how you interact with people, it, it, it affects how you make a living, things like that, uh, then you have a problem. If you if you can no longer pay your regular bills or your, your rent or your mortgage um, because you're, you're dumping all of this money into like an interest like old toys or old video games, it's a problem. If, if, you are stra- if your relationships are getting strained or you decide, hey, I'm, I'm not going to go to this uh, family function or what have you or hang out with my friends, obviously pre-COVID, uh, because you are drawn to this thing. What, 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 and it could be even a modern thing. Then you have a problem with it and it has to be, it should be addressed. Like there, that's always the cut to me. When does it bleed into real world where now it's affecting things outside of your hobbies? Yeah, then, we, then it's a problem. We've had collectors at the store, um, you know, that it gets worrisome you know that, that i mean they openly talk to me about things like having thousands of dollars in credit card debt and stuff and they're still buying 100 200 dollar games it's and compulsion yeah and they're talking about how they don't have the money for it and it's like i it's my job to take their money i can't be like no but someone needs to fucking tell these people no it's interesting that they would they would share that with you it's almost like it's a cry for help like they want someone to say well, you're nuts Right, but I. It's, well, not, it's like a casino. Yeah. They 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 know that you shouldn't be giving away their money, but that's how they make. I'm not saying I'm not comparing Luna to a casino. No, but it's the same thing. They're not going to tell you not to give you money. They're not. That's just not how it works. Um, it's I, not my job to be someone's parent. No, it's not. We're we're grown adults. Um, I know someone in my life that's always been a collector of things. Um, kind of would parallel with me, like comic books, Star Wars figures, things like that. Um, never got into video games, surprisingly, but a lot of the other stuff I used to do, uh, is still into like collecting cause it's gotten a lot bigger the past years. It, there was been a bubble that's actually coming with star Wars collectibles. That stuff kind of tailed down the past, I think five, six, seven years has gone back up. But it's going to be, be bubble bursting again for those of you star Wars collectors out there. I guarantee it. Um, this person is, they're not poor Ian, but they, you know they're they're almost living check to check almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, they're paying they're paying their their mortgage, they're paying their monthly stuff, but they're not saving any money. They're buying a bunch of expensive Star Wars toys right now. They're like almost gambling on it, but there is a nostalgia to it. I understand that like it's oh I, I love Star Wars growing up. I collected him as a teenager, and I want to tell him. I think I actually have mentioned like are you okay otherwise in your life with your expenses? Otherwise you shouldn't be spending all this money. We're talking in some cases hundreds and hundreds of dollars on individual Star Wars figures and then it just it balloons up. And I think it's it's nostalgia but we're also in this weird and it goes back to the the, the sports card things. We're in this weird commodities gambling mindset that I did not see to this extent 10 15 years ago. I don't think it was around this as, as, as much as it is now where it's almost like get rich quick, but at the same time, it's a fun thing you're doing, which is dangerous. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of the reason why we saw a lot of these uh, NES collectors get into it. You want to say like six years ago, seven and prices ballooned up. These are people that didn't know NES collecting was a thing. They discovered, oh, it's fun and I can make money off this potentially. I'm going to throw my money at it and get the full NES library in like a year. And I've seen that happen. We saw that happen with people uh, do that and then they eventually get out they get tired of it so it's it's a dangerous amalgamation of like gambling to some extent with nostalgia with these different things like pokemon cards and sports cards and collectibles that it's it's highly dangerous because i i'll, I'll be the first one to tell you you should not invest in collectibles it's just it's it's too volatile you don't know when the, the bomb's going to drop out. Well, it's literally yeah. all playing on people's emotions and emotions yes. can change wildly and quickly. 
Yes, and and especially when you don't know. We always talk about with NES games or with other like the, you know, they find that storage unit of of all the fucking mass toys, or like we see with the Spider Man, uh, twenty six hundred games going for nine thousand dollars when we know there's tons out there. Like that's emotions. You're wasting money on your emotions. There's no logic involved anymore. And when it's something you're close to that you feel is sexy, like collecting toys or collecting video games, the logic is thrown out the fucking window. Because I love it so much, people 10 years from now are going to love it, so the games will constantly keep going up in value. That's just not how any of these collectibles markets work. work. None of them work that way. Model, tr- model trains don't work that way. All the Marks toys from the 50s and 60s are now worth almost nothing. They used to be big 25 years ago when the boomers were our age. Like, these all have cycles. They all have cycles. All this stuff. This is the way it works. So anyway, back to nostalgia being toxic. That's one part of nostalgia being toxic. The other part is when um, you think you own whatever that nostalgic item is. Like, you could only think... Gatekeeping. Yeah, gatekeeping. Like, because I grew up with... And a lot of nostalgia can lead into gatekeeping. I'm more of a true fan of this than you because I was this age or I had this. Um, That gets very toxic very quickly. And not being able to separate out your experience from a future generation's experience, especially if they reboot, God forbid they reboot or come out with a new version of it. Oh my God, she doesn't have boobs anymore. I'm going to do 15 videos about it, about an underage female character not having boobs. (laughs) No, no one's like, ever done that. No one's done that. Like that's that's poisonous. Yeah. It's cretinous, but also poisonous at that point. Where it's like you don't you don't own how others can experience that property. Like I was not a big fan of of uh, these newer Star Wars films. There's major problems with them. Major problems. That doesn't negate my experience with the original ones. I thought you liked the third one. I liked it. It still wasn't great. And as a, as a collective, though, the trilogy is not a trilogy. I, that's the one point I made. There are three wildly different movies that aren't sure. a, a coherent trilogy. So, like, the prequels, a good example is the prequels are dog, dog shit. It's a more coherent trilogy of dog shit, but still dog shit. Th- those, that trilogy did not make me not dislike Star Wars anymore of the past. It didn't help me going forward, though, but it didn't sour me on my past experience with Star Wars. Sure. But I did sell out most of my collection, though. So it did sour me want to be part of that universe. I will say that. I was just like, oh, I'm kind of done with this. I, my nostalgia was gone for Star Wars at that point, 20 years ago. It definitely hasn't been around the last few years of these new movies. I saw, I've seen them, but I'm not like, I'm not like, woo! You know, I just can't. I'm fucking 40 years old. I can't do it anymore. At some point, you get tired of it. I think maybe it's 40 maybe that's the age 35 40 where you're like i can't i don't have the energy anymore to to, to feel about these things I th- I think for 30, some people I, th- I think 35 is when a, a big fuck this switch goes off in a lot of people you're like yeah it's still cool but i'm not going to get angry about it or really super excited either i, right. can, get, I can get oh new star wars movie cool i'm going to see it i'm not going to blow my load over it though the last the last moment of excitement i experienced for star wars faded away after the force awakens you're just like that's oh, gone. I just don't give a shit. That was, see that see that was like that was like uh, Attack of the Clones for me. I gave it a chance after Phantom Menace. Like oh that was disappointing. Attack of the Clones was so horrible. I'm like oh all those all those yeah. were awful. I mean I gave up on on that after Attack of the Clones. I just meant I I, I was ready to put aside the prequels and give Star Wars one last shot. And then The Force Awakens. It was like okay that was whatever. So I was a I was a senior in college. T- just turned. Probably literally just my birthday just happened right before after Attack of the Clones came out, 2002. And I went with people from my fraternity who were, who were big Star Wars fans. Because you're in your early 20s, you grew up with it when you were five. And that's when I knew things had changed for me. Because I was laughing at the dialogue, how awful the, ro- the romance was between Natalie Portman and uh, Christian Hay- uh, Haydenson. I, I can't and, think of any acting in a movie that, that, that literally felt like physically painful to me. So worse than that. So I literally was laughing. I literally said at that famous sand line, I visit. I remember this. I audibly said, "Oh, you got to be kidding me!" I said that, and I was shh by two people next to me, like in my fraternity, that I liked and respected. They're like, shh. they're like hanging on every fucking word, like we're like we're watching a Shakespearean play here. At that point, I realized, okay, I'm sort of over the Star Wars childhood thing. Nostalgia is gone. By the time it got to Yoda flipping around, I was like, this is insane. To see, this is not Yoda to me. And they were like, oh my God, that was so awesome. And afterwards, and I was like, okay, I'm divorced now. 
a 22. Yeah. That's when I knew I was done. I saw yeah. that I saw uh, that one on opening night and uh, at the mall movie theater. And the friends and I that I went with, we smoked so many blunts in the parking lot. That's a before. recurring theme with you, with drugging up before these experiences. Yeah. Yet. And I don't um, think I've ever ever been higher in a movie in my entire life and after you still weren't entertained right <laughs> no i wasn't and that's the thing afterwards i was like was that so bad because i was too high but i never saw that yeah. movie all the way through again but i've seen all those oh, scenes and i'm like no they're just as bad as i oh, recall it's them fucking, being. it's really bad yeah really bad all right well so nostalgia is a poison and it's toxic but a little nostalgia it's like anything you can overdose on nostalgia maybe have a shot of nostalgia ian but don't have the full bottle I mean, that's 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 Something I could say, a little credo. Sure. Uh, 